Like any star, it will run out of fuel in its core, and it starts changing, it starts bloating, getting so large that it will engulf the orbit of Mercury and Venus and come very close to Earth. So imagine looking on the horizon and sunrise is half the sky. Betelgeuse, one of the brightest stars in the sky and a member of the well-known constellation Orion, is one star that always appears when the topic turns to supernovas. It's a symbol of the hunter's right shoulder. The hunter's left foot is indicated by the brilliant star Rigel. Betelgeuse is a supergiant star. It is incredibly excellent on its own. However, there is a cost associated with such brilliance. Betelgeuse's massive energy output necessitates rapid fuel consumption, and the star is rapidly approaching the end of its existence. It will soon exhaust its fuel supply, fall under its own weight, and then explode in a terrific supernova. At least one major extinction event would be caused by the supernova's deadly cosmic rays. So, what exactly is currently happening to Betelgeuse? Is the apocalypse on the horizon? Is the end of the human race imminent? Join us as we explore why scientists believe this star explosion can end life on Earth. Astronomers have discovered a new, potentially catastrophic threat to life on Earth, and it comes from outer space, where humans have little chance of stopping it. Astronomers utilize the Chandra X-ray Observatory and other observatories to determine the window of time when the X-rays created by stellar explosions are strong enough to impact life on planets as far away as 100 light years, including Earth. New research suggests that the threat posed by exploded stars is greater now than it was in the past for the planets. The scientists have pinpointed the danger in the blast wave created by the explosion of stars that generate the abundant X-rays, which reach worlds like Earth months or years after the explosion occurs and is expected to last decades. This level of exposure could cause a mass extinction on Earth. If an onslaught of X-rays were to hit a nearby planet, it would have a profound effect on the composition of its atmosphere. This process has the potential to destroy a large amount of ozone, which shields Earth-like planets from the harmful UV radiation of their host stars. Astronomers have seen the aftermath of about 31 supernovae in outer space, and the results show that the radiation from these events will eventually reach the planet, which is about 160 light-years away. The group focused their telescopes on supernova 1979C, 1987A, 2010JL, and 1994I. Meanwhile, the current condition of the iconic red supergiant star Betelgeuse has been a hot issue in astronomy, especially if you recall the great dimming that occurred in late 2019 and early 2020. New information gathered by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope suggests that the sudden dimming was caused by the star blowing its top and shedding a significant portion of its surface in 2019. Scientists have never seen what is known as a surface mass ejection from Betelgeuse until now. The red supergiant star in our galaxy is nearing the end of its life and will likely explode as a supernova, making it visible throughout the day. A supernova hasn't been witnessed in our galaxy since the 17th century. So, scientists are perplexed over what's happening to the most recognized star in the constellation of Orion. Massive plasma clouds, known as coronal mass ejections, are occasionally released into space by our own sun. The supermassive ejection from Betelgeuse is predicted to be 400 billion times larger. An event of such massive mass ejection from a star's surface has never been witnessed before. Something is happening here that we can't quite put our finger on. It's a brand new phenomenon. Astronomers don't typically get to study stellar evolution in real time, normally observing stars in various phases lasting for long periods. They also don't usually observe stars bouncing, like Betelgeuse presently does. Betelgeuse is acting quite strangely. There is a bouncing sensation inside of it. It is believed that Betelgeuse is making a full recovery after the tremendous burp from within it experienced in 2019. This event occurred when a bubble of gas from deep within the star created enough power to blast off a part of its surface, creating a dust cloud above that made the star appear faint as seen from Earth. A supernova is an extremely large star's explosive death throes. If our sun were to go supernova, the resulting shockwave probably wouldn't be enough to destroy the entire planet, but it would certainly boil away the side of the planet that faces the sun. 
the global average temperature would rise to somewhere around 15 times that of the surface of our sun, according to scientific estimates. The planet Earth also wouldn't be able to maintain its orbit. If the sun suddenly lost a lot of mass, the planet might be able to go exploring. If the sun were to go supernova, even the Earth, which is only eight light minutes away, would be in danger. The sun, fortunately, is not a star that will eventually go supernova. The stars outside our solar system, however, will. So, what is the closest safe distance from us? Recent research using data from the Chandra X-ray Observatory estimates that Earth would have to be within 160 light years of a supernova for us to feel its destructive consequences. It was previously thought that a supernova would have to be less than 50 light years away from Earth for it to have any effect here. Evidence for a supernova within 300 light years having reached Earth millions of years ago was identified in a different study, although this supernova would not have caused an extinction event. Since the solution is not uniform, there is still plenty to learn. Let's imagine an extremely far away star explodes and threatens Earth. Consider a distance of 30 light years to the supernova. If a supernova occurred within 30 light years of Earth, it would have catastrophic consequences. The ozone layer, which shields Earth from the sun's UV rays, might be destroyed by the supernova's X-rays and more intense gamma rays. It has the potential to ionize atmospheric nitrogen and oxygen, which could result in the production of huge quantities of nitrous oxide, a gas that contributes to smog. Furthermore, phytoplankton and reef organisms would be hit particularly hard by a supernova explosion within 30 light years. The Marine Food Web's foundation would be irreparably damaged if something like this happened. Let's pretend the explosion was a little further away. Earth and its surface and ocean life may survive the explosion of a neighboring star with just minor damage. Even if an explosion occurred not too far away, we would be inundated with gamma rays and other forms of high-energy radiation. Mutations in Earth's living forms may result from this radiation. Climate change is another potential outcome of a nearby supernova's radiation. As far as we know, no supernova has ever erupted within 100 s of light years of Earth. The most recent supernova visible to the eye was Supernova 1987A in the year 1987. It was around 168,000 light years away. Prior to it, Johannes Kepler recorded the last observable supernova in 1604. At a distance of around 20,000 light years, it was the brightest star visible. You could see it well in broad daylight. To our knowledge, however, it had no noticeable impact on planet Earth. The Pinwheel Galaxy, often known as M101, has just experienced a new supernova, the nearest to Earth in 10 years. At a distance of 21 million light years, however, it will have no effect on Earth. It was first spotted on May 19, 2023 by amateur astronomer Koichi Itagaki. For a few days, the supernova was brighter than usual. For the next few months, it should still be seen using backyard telescopes by amateur astronomers. The supernova, designated 2023 IXF, can be found in the direction of Ursa Major, toward the tip of the Big Dipper's handle. Where does the nearest candidate supernova lie in terms of distance? To begin, supernova can be split into two distinct varieties. A Type II supernova is the implosion of an old, massive star. Within 160 light years of Earth, there are no stars that are sufficiently massive to accomplish this. A type of Wama supernova occurs when an extremely low-mass white dwarf star collapses under the weight of its companion's debris. Since these stars are so faint and elusive, we have no way of knowing how numerous they are. Within 160 light years, there are likely several hundred of these stars, but we are unaware of any that are on the verge of exploding. The nearest contender for a supernova progenitor is the star IK Pegasi B. It's part of a binary star system located roughly 150 light years from our Sun and Solar System. IK Pegasi A, the primary star, is a typical main sequence star like our own Sun. The companion star, IK Pegasi b, is a massive white dwarf that is exceedingly tiny and compact, orbiting IK Pegasi a closer than Mercury orbits the Sun, and hence has the potential to explode as a Type I supernova. As the A star expands in size during its red giant phase, the white dwarf will be able to accrete or absorb material from the surrounding gaseous envelope. A supernova explosion may occur if the B star collapses in on itself when it is sufficiently massive. Where does Betelgeuse fit in? When is it going to go boom? 
No one knows for sure, but it's unlikely to happen in our lives. It might happen tomorrow, or it might happen a million years from now. When it does occur, anyone on Earth will see a stunning event in the sky, but nothing on our planet will be affected because Betelgeuse is so far away, at a distance of 430 light years. Some scientists believe that supernovae's high-energy radiation has already mutated organisms on Earth, including humans. Around every 15 million years, a supernova might potentially threaten Earth. Another source claims that every 240 million years, a supernova explodes near 10 parsecs, which is 33 light-years of Earth. As you can see, we are in the dark. However, these figures can be compared to the 4.5 billion years that Earth has existed and the few million years that humans have inhabited it. And if you do that, you'll realize that an Earth-directed supernova is inevitable. Meanwhile, the odds of a solar flare or an asteroid striking Earth are increasing. Instead of a kilonova, it's a killer nova. Even though the collision would have to be extremely close to wreaking havoc on our world, scientists have determined the possible effects of a neutron star collision happening near Earth and found that these so-called kilonovas could be real killers that would doom humanity. Radiation from a neutron star merger within 36 light years of Earth might wipe out all life on the planet. Given that neutron stars are the collapsed remnants of dead stars and are made of matter so dense that a teaspoon of one brought to Earth would weigh about 10 million tons, which is equivalent to 350 Statues of Liberty balanced on a spoon, it is perhaps not surprising that neutron star collisions that create bursts of light called kilonovas are considered the most violent and powerful events in the known universe. In addition to producing gamma ray bursts and cosmic rays, which can't be made even at the incredible ultra-high temperatures and pressures found in the hearts of massive stars, these supernova mergers are the only environments we know of turbulent enough to forge elements heavier than lead, such as gold and platinum. In addition, gravitational waves, which are produced when neutron stars collide, can be detected on Earth even after reaching a distance of billions of light years. The merger of two neutron stars is a very unusual yet beautiful event. The observations of the neutron star merger behind the 2017 gravitational wave signal GW1-70817 and the 2017 gamma ray burst GRB1-70817A formed the basis for the team's research. This is the only known neutron star merger, located around 130 million light years away, that was detected in electromagnetic radiation and gravitational waves. The most obvious danger from a neutron star merger is the gamma rays it emits, which have enough power to ionize an atom. If the ozone layer were to be destroyed in this way, the Earth would be subjected to potentially fatal levels of ultraviolet radiation from the Sun. Fortunately, the effect has a very narrow range. In other words, it would take a direct hit from a jet to give rise to such dramatic effects. However, there is another problem. Gamma rays coming from neutron star mergers would pretty much roast any living thing that falls directly in their path for about 297 light years. Ozone layer recovery from an off-axis gamma ray cocoon strike would take four years, exposing Earth's surface to harmful ultraviolet light for nearly half a decade. These jets are encased in gamma radiation, which would also affect the ozone layer of Earth if it were in its wider path within about 13 light years of them. Although the impacts of neutron star mergers in the form of gamma rays are transient, there is another sort of ionizing radiation that is generated by these emissions and lasts for much longer. The X-ray afterglow is the result of gamma ray jets colliding with the interstellar medium, which is made up of gas and dust. This X-ray emission lasts longer than gamma ray emissions and has the potential to ionize the ozone layer, so it is arguably more dangerous. However, Earth would have to be within a distance of only 16.3 light years from this afterglow for us to be concerned about our fate. And this isn't even the worst of it. The most dangerous consequence of the neutron star collision discovered by the team is the bubble of highly energetic charged particles, or cosmic rays, that expands outward from the center of the event. If these cosmic rays were to hit Earth, they would destroy the ozone layer, leaving the planet vulnerable to ultraviolet rays for thousands of years. Even if Earth were 36 light years away, our planet might still be impacted, making this an extinction level catastrophe. The specific distance of safety and the component that is most dangerous is uncertain as many of the effects depend on properties like viewing angle to the event, the energy of the blast, the mass of material ejected, and more. With the combination of parameters we select, 
it seems that the cosmic rays will be the most threatening. Again, there's no need to freak out. Weighing the gloomy image given by the impact of neutron star mergers against several other considerations is important before bemoaning that the end is close. The relatively modest range of lethality combined with the rarity of neutron star mergers means that the extinction induced by a double neutron star merger is not something that the inhabitants of Earth need to worry about. To put this rarity into perspective, consider that out of the 100 billion stars in the Milky Way, astronomers have only identified one system, CPD 292176, 11,400 light years from Earth, that might be the parent of a kilonova. Other, more common phenomena, like as solar flares, asteroid strikes, and supernova explosions, have a higher potential for destruction. There have been other events linked to mass extinctions on Earth, the most notable being the Cretaceous Tertiary Extinction Event, which occurred roughly 66 million years ago and resulted from the impact of a massive asteroid that wiped out the non avian dinosaurs and three quarters of life on Earth. This study has significant implications for the hunt for extraterrestrial life because it helps us identify systems that are unlikely to have the circumstances necessary to support life, at least life as we know it. Experts believe we are currently in the midst of a sixth major extinction event on Earth, which would be the worst in terms of biodiversity loss since the end of the dinosaur age 65.5 million years ago. Unlike previous extinction events caused by natural phenomena, the sixth mass extinction is driven by human activity, primarily, but not limited to, the unsustainable use of land, water and energy use, and climate change. Currently, 40% of all land has been converted for food production. Agriculture is also responsible for 90% of global deforestation and accounts for 70% of the planet's freshwater use, devastating the species that inhabit those places by significantly altering their habitats. It's evident that where and how food is produced is one of the biggest human-caused threats to species extinction and our ecosystems. To make matters worse, unsustainable food production and consumption are significant contributors to greenhouse gas emissions that are causing atmospheric temperatures to rise, wreaking havoc across the globe. The climate crisis is causing everything from severe droughts to more frequent and intense storms. It also exacerbates the challenges associated with food production that stress species while creating conditions that make their habitats inhospitable. Increased droughts and floods have made it more difficult to maintain crops and produce sufficient food in some regions. The intertwined relationships among the food system, climate change, and biodiversity loss are placing immense pressure on our planet. The current rate of species extinction is estimated to be 1,000 to 10,000 times higher than natural extinction rates or the rate at which species would go extinct if humans did not exist. While extinctions are a natural and expected part of the evolutionary process, the current rate is high enough to threaten crucial ecological functions that support human life on Earth, such as a stable climate, predictability in weather patterns, and the availability of natural resources. If we don't change direction, the world's biodiversity will continue to decline at an alarming rate and it will take decades, at most, to restore the lost species and ecosystems. Do we choose to kill ourselves since Betelgeuse won't kill us? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.